This video is an overview of using the Ping Robinson PVT calculator as it's distributed in, for the introductory chemical engineering thermodynamics by Elliott and Lyra. This video assumes that you have already viewed the videos introducing introduction to the MATLAB folders for, for navigating the folders and the video on browsing the property tables which we will use in this routine. The directory itself is very simple. It's important that you understand the logic used to, to solve equations of state before you try to work with this program. And I will lead you through it a little bit, but it doesn't substitute for reading and understanding the, the textbook discussion. We start with the pressure and temperature and use the equation of state parameters, which are functions of the critical properties. We make them dimensionless. And we take these two dimensionless parameters and we put them into a cubic equation in the compressibility factor. We solve the equation of state as a cubic in compressibility factor. We then find imaginary and real roots and sort them. And then after we've sorted the results, we can determine the volumes and other properties. Well, the Ping-Robinson equation is first introduced in Chapter 7. So we open that folder. And let's take a look at the code before, before we run the code. First notice that there's not a function statement here. That tells us that this is a script file, which will require input from the workspace and return values to the workspace. And that's particularly helpful as you begin to learn to use work MATLAB you, because you can see all the, the variables. Row 20 is very important. Row 20 is where we specify which compound we, were, we will use for the calculations. And this is the property row from the properties table that I've discussed elsewhere. And this is using the row number, not the ID number of the compound. So this happens to be row 64, which at the time of the recording is for argon. The add path function I've discussed elsewhere, and this statement also I've discussed similar statements elsewhere to check to see if the props exist and if not to load them. I can then find from the properties table, I can load the name and the critical properties. I can then check to see if those values have been actually found from the table and make sure that they are, if they're not there, I get error messages. I also need to check to see if pressure and temperature have been specified in the workspace. If not, the program can't proceed, so there are error messages that go to the screen if they're missing. Now I'm getting into the guts of the program. I'm getting ready to do the calculations. Here's the gas constant and the equation of state parameters in terms of the critical properties and the eccentric factor. I'm calculating the reduced properties here and determining the dimensionless A and B parameters. So at this point in the program, I have determined I've completed these first two steps. Now I'm ready to solve to, to work on the cubic equation. So the next thing I do is set up the coefficients for the cubic equation in Z. And if you look in the textbook, you can find that these are the coefficients. Uh, for the cubic equation. This is for z squared, z to, d, z to the first, and this is the constant coefficient. Solving a polynomial is very easy in MATLAB because there's a pre-written routine to solve polynomials. I just need to supply the coefficients, and I've done so here. MATLAB is very powerful, and it will find imaginary as well as real numbers. So for the next statement determines which of those um, compressibility factors have imaginary parts which are zero. Those are the real ones. So I keep the indexes for the real values and then I can sort them. If there's multiple values I will take the, the maximum and min minimum values. And if there's only one root then I'll use that as the compressibility factor. I can then determine the volumes and I also can calculate other properties now from those roots. Um, we will discuss later the fugacity, which helps us determine the stability. 
And another property that I've got programmed here to help you see how we're going to use this later is called the enthalpy departure, HDEP. So I hope that's helpful in helping you see how the program is structured. Let's run the program. So I'm going to put in um, a temperature and pressure for argon. Let me put in a temperature and I'll put in a pressure. This is in, mega, in Kelvin and in uh, megapascal. And I can run Prios. All right, I've got uh, more turned on. So let me get rid of this so I can see more. Argon. And it's going to give me the compressibility factors. In this case, there are three real numbers. Um, it sorts them and throws out the middle one in this case. It gives me the molar volumes and the fugacity values, as well as the departures. And from what we've discussed, um, I need to take the stable route, which is the route, the route with the smaller fugacity. So I'm going to look for the, the, the column. And the in this case, the first column is the stable answer. So I hope this is helpful.